Alright, since we're in the month of October, I did think of a couple of games to review for Halloween, so here goes! Castlevania for the NES is a classic choice to choose, so why not? I mean, everyone else talked about it except me, so that's my reason to talk about it. Now, back when Konami is good and not like they are today, they made a game where you played this guy called Simon Belmont, whose goal is to not save a princess or indeed save anything aside from the world, perhaps, but to teach Dracula and his many monsters some S&M lessons by whipping them with Simon's trusty whip till they cry and die. I've never played Castlevania on the NES before as a kid, having never owned an NES to play it, and whenever I did get to play it via emulators or an NES, I never finished it in its entirety as I used usually mostly stop and turn off the game after the Medusa boss fight, but since it is the month of Halloween and I did do a Let's Play of it before with intentions to review it afterwards, let's talk about it. So what do I think of the first Castlevania game? Well, I really enjoyed it and I would like to own an actual copy of the game now, even though I'm more of a Metroidvania gamer when it came to the Castlevania games. But the original is a fun, classic, challenging 2D platformer where you whip a lot of enemies into submission, do some platformings, collect hearts and power-ups and the occasional pork chop to heal if you can find it, then facing the boss at the end of each stage. It's a lot of fun and the game slowly gets more difficult as with any classic Nintendo game, and sure, there are some bull cookie moments in the game like everyone's quote-unquote favorite flying Medusa heads knocking you off platforms, or the stupid midget Fleeman sucking you and your health off until you get past them because otherwise they'll keep respawning like most of the enemies you encounter. It's mostly anything that's small and anything that flies that makes this game trickier. But those are just some small frustrating moments, but they're not very hard if you learn how to play the game and play it competently. I mean, in my Let's Play, it was my first time playing it in its entirety. At first I had some troubles, but afterwards I met very little resistance since I actually used my brain to find a strategy to beat the levels, so I don't end up going all sucking at video games nerd and making bullshit shit bowl up about the game being too hard. Like the hallway before the boss fight with death where you have to fight the knights. That's so fudging easy if you just stop and think of a strategy to beat them, and even then it's not really that difficult to beat when you stop to analyze how simple it is, and the game gives you plenty of time to fight them so you can't exactly blame the time limit either. Now I'm not saying the game isn't difficult, it's just not as difficult as other people claim it to be. In fact, the only real difficult part in this game I find is the clock tower. Now that was just a barrage of enemies everywhere, and trying not to fall into the pit and die is tricky. But you're not entirely doomed to lose. There are power-ups like I mentioned that can help you, though there's not too many of them that are guaranteed to pop up like the invincibility item or the cross that wipes out all enemies on screen and the pork chops only pop up in certain spots. There is one useful item to pick up and it's the whip extension, which Dracula for some reason keeps it around his castle hidden in the candles along with other things. And it's always there when you need it. Maybe Dracula does want to be whipped considering I assumed he opened the front gates to let Simon in. I mean it's not like he jumped in forcefully through a window. The sub weapons are also hidden in the castle, which are very very useful in your quest to whip Dracula and his friends in a submission, like my personal favorite, the boomerang cross, the holy water, and pretty much all of the sub-weapons except the knife. That one is the weakest and lamest weapon that I'm somewhat surprised Konami never phased it out. Like, who actually likes using the knife? Anyone? Oh, and don't forget the stack up on hearts to use the sub-weapons, which is kind of weird since hearts are usually health items like in the Zelda games. I guess the only way Simon could have used the sub-weapons is if he had the heart to use them. HA! Speaking of hearts, you also have lives in the game, which when you die in an area, you start back at the checkpoint of that area. But if you lose all your lives and use a continue, you start back at the beginning of the stage. But fortunately, you do have infinite continues, so while the game can be frustrating at parts, at least you can keep playing and eventually beat it, albeit losing whatever power-ups you had up to that point. You can also earn lives by getting points, which is one of the best things I like about a good point system is that the points actually do something and not just to make you look pretty on the scoreboard that nobody cares about. Castlevania has quite a lot of variety in its game, from the monsters you fight, the level design and the look of it, and the bosses you fight from the classic horror monster roster like Frankenstein, the mummies, and you even fight Death, who I'm not sure why Dracula is buddy-buddy with Death. I thought Death was more higher class than Dracula, but whatever, the bosses are all unique and require different strategies to beat if you aren't exploiting the holy water which is really deadly if leveled up. That's what the Roman numerals do when you find them, which power up your sub-weapons so you can either make them stronger or throw more weapons out like the boomerang cross, which I didn't know that's what they did. They sound pretty useful, and they are, but only if you live long enough to reach the boss to make use of it and that you don't switch out sub-weapons or else you lose it. On the mention of sound, the music is of course classic, memorable, and great to listen to while playing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, despite the game being difficult and having controls that might frustrate the impatient, it's still a pretty short game. It only took me an hour and 40 minutes to beat it for my first entire playthrough, including the death, so you'll be able to beat it too. But yeah, Castlevania on the NES. It's been talked about forever and still worth talking about because it's such a classic game to play, which led to a lot of other great Castlevania games to come along, for the most part, including a PlayStation 1 remake. I'm Wizard 100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more from Wizard 100. See ya! Oh my god!